Okay. So, so I'd like to start uh, with the subject uh, that I missed last time because of, la of lack of time. It is about uh, how to compute cohomology of the complete intersections. So what is remarkable in what I'll explain right now is that it is possible to compute uh, cohomology, at least part of cohomology of complete intersection without, without solving the equation for complete intersection. So Andrei, uh, I have to confess that I, I do not know what is a complete intersection, so. Yes, yes, uh, okay, thank you. So the typical, the typical setup would be, suppose we have CPM or uh, any other uh, toric variety. Suppose we have a set of equations. F I. So what do we mean when we say we have a we have an equation in CPL? We know that there are no holomorphic functions. Okay. But uh, <clears throat> it would not be a problem because instead of having holomorphic function, we have uh, we have sections of line bundles. And the uh, manifold could be considered uh, as zero of, uh, of one section of one bundle, or there could be several bundles. So manifold could be described as an intersection of uh, several sections of several line bundles. Now, what does it mean in practice? Okay. I am saying words, but I'd like to define something and compute it. So section of bundle of degree D Yes, okay, on CPL. Is a polynomial of degree D in Z naught D M. Okay. So particular section means particular polynomial. You're interested okay. not in a section, but in, in a zero locus of the section, right? Yes, in a zero locus. However, I am interested not only in the space of solution like this, but I am interested in uh, co-setting it by this time. Mm -hmm. So it means once again that I have to work on C n plus one. And then, as you know, the favorite trick would be just to write down delta function. <clears throat> so F equals to zero. And then 
take this course. So this comes very natural in the framework that we are doing. Moreover, I may be interested in uh, intersection of such sections, mm -hmm. of zeros of such sections. So I may have FA of degree DA, or uh, even more general. The general setup, of course, would be <laughs> FA of all these and uh, ask that this FA, okay, so I may consider CN over C star K, okay? I just want this FA to have some weights with respect to this uh, terms. It would be the same. Okay, so I'll speak about. So it is possible to write down the general formulas, but it will you will see how it goes. So the plan would be the following. First piece of the plan would be to construct. So you, you know that's what I like. Delta function. Second, interpret it as E to some homotopy. So the trick is always this, is always the same. And then explain that uh, homotopy that we studied before, namely covariant homotopy, would allow us to forget this thing. So this is a strategy. And to get the formula. Ah, the unique one. Yes, yes. <clears throat> when I mean the formula, I mean the integral formula for the piece of cohomology ring. Not full cohomology ring, but piece of cohomology ring. In particular, in this way, I could get equivariant volumes. So to get equivariant volumes, I would probably need some external C star that could act on the space of this solution, okay? So this is the strategy. So you may ask uh, where I would like to use this. I would say that I would like to use this or we would, we would need this formula if we would like to understand the Nikrasov integral. Because Nikrasov integral is basically the integral over matrices. So there are some other matrices, IJ, that obey equation. And of course, we consider the coset with respect to the group G. 
So here, important piece, so this is the instanton equation. This here, the important piece is uh, that uh, there is an equation. So that's the addition. Yes. But uh, in, in the presentation that I'm giving, it's not that important that it is ADHM. I just want to say that IDHM equation is just a particular case of the story I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So to, to get Nikrasa from this, we would need this one and another piece of the story. We will need to consider non-abelian. Non-abelian group here. So I will postpone study of non-abelian group to the later moment. And but today I'd like to explain this. I would like to explain how to impose equations. Because uh, so this is needed in four-dimensional story. In two-dimensional story. We will need these equations in order to describe, in particular, uh, uh, cohomology or equivalence volume of uh, something uh, that sits inside CPL. So I think it's it's kind of a piece of knowledge. Okay. What I like here, I'll tell you in advance, that uh, that uh, doing this, we will go from uh, manifold to super manifold. And this is exactly a place where super, man where super manifolds appear. I'm sorry. So you know, so we may we may start recording. We already do, right? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So now, now here f is considered as a function on C n plus one. Okay. So, Andre, you still you, you, be, you began with the word complete intersection. I still don't know what it is. Do, do, do you mean clean ah. or trans, clean or transversal intersection? Ah. No. Well, let me try to explain. I think I need to explain this. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I forgot to explain. So I, I said all wool, but I but I forgot to explain what does it mean uh, to be complete intersection. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, here, important thing is that this F is defined globally. Mm -hmm. However, in the definition of algebraic manifold, it's enough to consider something that is uh, given by uh, uh, algebraic equations locally. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when we are writing global equations, we can have uh, irreducible, we can, uh, it could be decomposed into components. And then when we take one of the components, it is also algebraic manifold. Mm -hmm. So well, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. So consider x, y equals to epsilon. So hyperbola. Mm -hmm. mm. When epsilon goes to zero, mm -hmm. I'll get x y equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So manifold, this was irreducible. Here manifold. is a union of components. If we take only one component, 
that would also be a manifold. Mm -hmm. So it may happen, it may happen <coughs> that we would like to consider manifold obtained as follows. Consider set of equations and take only some components, mm -hmm. like vertical components. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's one thing. Another thing, <clears throat> when I mean complete intersection, it would mean that I consider them as a case actually of general position. Mm -hmm. So cases of special positions would not be considered. So it would mean that it's that I have this set of sections and these sections are in general position. So then then should it mean so the same as so, so as, as you will see as you will see during construction uh, if they would not be in general position, the integral formulas that I will go that I am going to present um, would not mean exactly this. Mm -hmm. They would mean that you impose this condition and have some bundle over the space of solution to this equation. So I think the well intersection in general position, I think in this kind of in smooth or yeah, smooth geometry that's called clean intersection. Right. Uh, you so, see, when I say complete, so complete refers to the fact that you are taking all components. Complete means all. So clean means that tangent spaces uh, uh, intersect uh, well in well in the gen most general possible way. So you see, mm -hmm. here here it's uh, discussion of definitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, when uh, I'll write down a formula, mm -hmm. okay. It will be clean what, what is going on, mm -hmm. OK? So uh, <clears throat> so as always, I would start writing down delta function here. So since it's a complex case, I'll do it in my favorite way. Plus by A DFA plus pi bar A bar DFA bar. And here I put minus epsilon okay that's uh, that's what I mean that, that is a delta function actually it's, it's an integral representation for the delta function. And here I have some sum over A. Of course, it's a differential form. Now, I'd like to see <coughs> So if I integrate over P, I will get <laughs> A 
I ignore two pies. So, so this integral, of course, is this. So this is a regularized delta function. Once again, I'd like to, to check that this delta function is closed. So the easiest way to check that this delta function is closed is to observe that we may introduce operator Q that is the RAM plus important operator that is, uh, of course, uh, Okay. So how do I how do I interpret this? I interpret this as a DRAM acting on the on odd space. And on this odd space, so this odd space has coordinates, has coordinates P, A. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let us see that this object is exact. So consider Q applied to what? P A F A plus P A bar F A bar plus epsilon and maybe partial would help me to say what what should I put here? Mm, I think um, P pi or something like that. Yes, exactly P pi. Exactly. So actually, I have this super manifold. So these would be coordinates and psi, that is Q of X, and P, that is Q of Pi are differential. And this is the perfect Dirac operator. So, so is P fermionic variable? Yes. Okay. And this is just okay, I need to underline that it is odd space. Yeah. And this says that, that actually what we are dealing with no, sorry, P, P is bosonic, pi is fermionic, right? P is bosonic oh, yes. and pi is fermionic. Yes, so, so, so this is fermionic. This is pi. P, mm -hmm. P is bosonic, pi is fermionic, yes. Mm -hmm. So is this like you're considering the total space of the line bundle? I mean, the line bundle that has this equation as a section? And yes, but, it, but, but it is not the line bundle yet because it's total space before I take a C star. 
Yes. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. That's right. so, so in other condition, in other condition, it would be, of course, uh, the line bundle, or yes, it would be the line bundle with inverse parity of the fiber. Ah, okay. Yeah. I see. Thank you. However, here it is enough for me. So, so here I am working globally. Okay. So the line bundle would be after I take a quotient. And here I am not taking a quotient. So as you say, so in this situation, I actually have C. So I am generalizing this story. It is a standard story of toric variety. Two C M times C shifted by one L I take this. So I actually think that this should be considered, should be called. A super toric variety, but uh, people don't use this commonly. So I have to explain what what do I mean. This should be considered a super. This should be called a super toric variety. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying super toric variety, people are saying uh, avoid complete intersection. So what actually people mean by complete intersection is the following. You take the super toric variety and you write down this representative. Where this Q is, of course, super derived. So now the game would be, so now we will have a generalization of the game that we play. And this generalization of the game would be replace the RAM by super the RAM everywhere. And think that you are actually solving the geometrical problem depicted here. Picking up this X section mm, is to pick up as a special representative. So yeah, and Andre, uh, you, you sometimes write this shift by one. I, I, I don't know if it's the, what convention you are using, but but pi has. If you have the gradient, it should be grading minus one. Mm. At okay. least at least pi, pi so has see, degree minus one. See, since I write, so a lot of this. Mm -hmm. So uh, because uh, I I like the two grading. Mm -hmm. So what you like is the two grading, you are putting five here, mm -hmm. this capital, so changing parity. Now, you may see that you may play exactly the same game. You may play exactly the same game as uh, it was played before, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> So, uh, so you pick up, say, differential form, yes? And you consider the factorization with respect to C star. You do it in exactly the same way, OK? And then you are replacing this term together with the moment map. You are replacing all of them by the localization term coming from a covariant cohomology. Because uh, so you see the thing that you need that it is uh, it is not a problem 
to extend uh, the equivalent calculus to odd variables. The non-trivial part here is to understand that complete intersection, and this is this is what I mean, complete intersection, the class of this. Mm -hmm. That complete intersection here actually means uh, superspace. So when you will write down Equivalent deformation, you will get similar factors. So, in the Bosoni case, we had weight in denominator, and now we will have difference. It, it would mean that you will have weight in numerator. Just replace everything. Have similar Gaussian integral, but uh, Gaussian integral over odd variables. Sorry, Andre, I, I have to confess I don't follow. What, what, what you are saying? Could you, could you say again the logic? So, so previously, previously, mm -hmm. we derived the following formula. Integral over CPM mm -hmm. equivalent. Say, if you say equivalent volume. Mm -hmm. or, or even, even P star of some, uh, okay. So we were studying something like this. And we are taking a covariant integral. So this integral was replaced by integral over C n plus one. If omega i could be considered as a polynomial of some phi in equivalent sense, not equal, but equivalent. Then we got the result. And if you would if we would like to write it down equivalently, it was something like this. Sigma one. So this integral is not over C n plus one, it's over, over just. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. So through integral over C n plus one, we arrived to this integral. So the strategy was that this went to the integral over C n plus one and this integral turned out to be such. Mm -hmm. Well, each denominator appear from uh, each copy of C here. Mm -hmm. And what I put here as, is the equivalent volume of this C. So here I put down the product of equivalent volumes. Mm -hmm. And here I put uh, classes that are coming from the powers of the Fubini Studi metric, or in more general cases, there could be several classes mm -hmm. of this type. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Now, just imagine what, what would happen if we would consider this thing that is complete intersection. We would like to replace this thing by the local. Mm -hmm. So here we have a set of sections that that equal to zero. So we will go from this space to the integral over the product. Mm -hmm. And we will see what would be the change. And the change would be that we will have that we could have numerator and these numerators would re would represent integrals over this PCL. They would be numerators just because uh, we, but, but just because they are fermions, and the, and then the integral they come to the numerator. And let me show how it works in the simplest possible example. So in the simplest possible example, consider CPM and also fundamental line bundle. Okay? So this line bundle will be a bundle of, of degree one. Okay? And this is, of course, you see the, the, the sections of the fundamental line bundle. This is, of course, CPN minus one, right? So here in particular, I may consider so, so example here would be saying Z5 equals to zero, okay? Take one of the coordinates and put it to zero. So this thing is linear. So this is CP n minus one. Now I have the, the following formula. Everything is the same. I will consider non equivalent case for simplicity. And here I put five. So this is the equivalent volume of this odd fiber. I have a translation and I'll get the good old formula for CPN minus one. Um, yeah, sorry, how, how again this, this phi appears in the numerator? It is equivalent volume of this. Mm. Equivalent volume of uh, so called equation space. So sometimes people call this variable space and this equation space. Mm -hmm. It's because equations take value here. Sure. Mm -hmm. I see. 
You see, to make this equation, I introduce odd variable, I introduce supermanifold, then I'm computing equivalent well volume of this supermanifold. And you see how it works. It worked. Now, you may ask, what would happen? Yes, by the way, you may see that the answer does not depend on particular sector. Only degree is important. OK? Then you may ask, what would happen if I consider not, say, z5 equal to 0, but, say, but when you say you may see, you mean, you mean that we should run the, the whole sort of homotopy arguments? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, see this, but you see, I am giving you homotopy arguments so you could uh, run them, you see, not to watch them. You may run them mm -hmm. and you may see as a, uh, as a result in formulas. Mm -hmm. Now, you may ask, what would you, you see? I, I still I would still like to play this formula again. What would happen if I consider here not L but L squared? Okay. So let it, so quadratic. It means uh, it means I'm considering the quadric. Okay. I am considering the quadric, and uh, from this argument, it is clear that I will have a factor of two here, all right? Because it's the way, that's how this phi appeared. Phi appeared from the action of the vector field V. And now I need the vector field V, of course to act on this auxiliary or super variable. So say if I put here two, or I can put here K, then I have K standing here. Then I make a cancellation as, as before and I see that this actually uh, determines me the manifold of dimension n minus one. You see, when I count uh, the degrees of pi, I, I, can see, I can see out of it the dimension of the manifold. The difference is that here I'll have k standing here. From a covariant argument, K standing here actually means that, uh, okay, your vector field is K time greater than the vector field before. So you have K standing here. So how can we understand that it is, that it is proper? You might think that we have to study quadrics. What do we know about quadrics? We know that nothing depends on the form of the quadrix, of the quadrix. So I can easily say that here is z, z5 squared. Okay. So actually, in this case, I will have the degree to or degree, okay. If k, let me put here k. I will get the k copies of the same factor. k times, k times the same thing. That's why I see that for this particular case, that for this particular section, Actually, the answer should be multiplied by k. Mm -hmm. 
So it is capable, capable manifold. Like you know, there is a double point, triple point, etc. Here is the capable manifold. And I see this phenomena from K standing here. So not, not only I outlined, uh, I out, outlined the derivation, I also showed you in examples how it works. So only, so only degree is important. Moreover, you may ask, what about the sigma as I stand here? Okay? Do I have the corresponding version here? And I say, of course. But to do this, I need to study not all, uh, I need to study not all uh, bundles, but so-called equivalent bundles. So when I say equivalent bundle, I mean that I would like to consider only such problems where these sections are equivalent. So you may ask, what does it mean in practice, right? In particular, for our <coughs> In particular, for our uh, case, remember we studied CP1, okay? Maybe CP1 is too simple. Because you see, we immediately come to points when we consider bundle. Uh, it means that, uh, that the function F is of course a function of uh, Z0, Z1, etc. If I have an action that Zi goes to lambda i Zi, I need uh, this f to be equivalent in the sense that when I make this transformation, this f should go to itself, however, with some weight. Okay? So it means that, uh, remember, we have the following case. Z0 goes to Z0, Z1 goes to lambda external Z1, right? Mm -hmm. So we may ask what, so we may ask what, uh, what sections are allowed. So, in this case, the section like this is not allowed because it is not homogeneous. I don't see what's written there, sorry. I'm sorry. So consider this case. Mm -hmm. Let us see which F are allowed. Mm -hmm. Are allowed, are allowed. In this particular case, Z0 to the power K is a K. This is allowed. This is allowed. However, this not allowed. Because in this, because this monomial is a eigen vector of this action. However, this polynomial is not. Mm -hmm.
So here we are coming to the notion, and it's a proper notion of, so he, you may ask, what does it mean? I would say, here we are coming to the notion of equivariant line bundles, okay? Equivariant line bundle is uh, a bundle such that the action of the group on the base could be lifted to the fiber. In other terms, sections of these line bundles should be eigenvectors. So, so we will not have this great freedom in choosing this section. So the, uh, the action of, on the base can be lifted to the total space probably, or, or to the fiber. Yeah, yes, to the total space, yes. But, but it is better, it is easier. It's much easier to say it, not in terms of the action on the total space. We are considering special cases of the base space that are uh, that are quotients of complex projective uh, of uh, of a fine spaces. It just means that equation should be homogeneous with respect to external rules. And when equations are homogeneous with respect to the to this group, we will have similar formulas. So the external group may have weight. on this, on odd space. So, so the construction you're playing with, so you keep saying line bundle, but the construction you have in mind is trivial line bundle over CN, which you are pushing forward along the reduction. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But, but for me, it's better. For me, it's better to play not with the uh, not with the spectrum of something, but but with the function of it. It's better to. It's easier to explain what are the sections mm -hmm. of a covariant line bundle. So sections of a covariant line bundles are uh, polynomials that are eigen that are uh, eigenvectors. Of the external group. And in this case, if I have a covariant bundle, I will have numerator. It will be some lambda one phi plus, so in this particular case, plus uh, mu k sigma k. And here I will have a product. So this would be the formula. And uh, I, think, I think it's a proper place to introduce this formula because uh, you will look in the Nikratsov's formulas and you will see this numerator. And you may ask, what is the origin of this numerator? The origin of this numerator are, are equations. In particular, in Nikrasov's story,
So you, there are lots, lots of letters that appear there. What, what are those letters? Okay. Lambda. Okay, I say sorry. So, so lambda is a number, is an integer number. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, this lambda mm -hmm. is a weight corresponding to the action of C star that we are factorizing. Mm -hmm. And this factorization equivalent parameter we will call phi. Mm -hmm. But there are also weights of uh, equations. Mm -hmm. so, sometimes it happens. That we will call mu. There's something that's barely visible there, mu, a, what, epsilon? Okay, so I'll write, so, okay, I'll write, I'm sorry. I'll rewrite this factor here. Product a from one to L. Mm -hmm. Because there are several equations. Mm -hmm. The total number of equations is L. Mm -hmm. Each equation has a weight with respect to the C star that we are using in factorization. Yes. And C here will multiply by five. Mm -hmm. Plus, there are external C stars. Mm -hmm. So for each external C, C, C star, we have a covariant parameter sigma k. Mm -hmm. And there are another integer that I call mu. The eighth equation with respect to k's external group can have a weight mu k a. Mm -hmm. And this numerator that is linear in equivariant parameters is a contribution of the odd integral, and it comes in numerator. The only thing we need to compute are these weights, lambda and mu. Mm -hmm. So, in the class of story, in the cross of story, we have this equation. Consider the gauge group that acts here. So there is, there is an internal gauge group that we factorize with. And there is also an external gauge group because these are matrices of complex numbers. From this external group, we will get this type of factor. I, I, I say it in advance because uh, at some moment, we will study this example too. I just want to say that this is a quadrant in very many variables, in roughly speaking, uh, 2s squared plus nk variables, a lot of variables. So there are many quadrants, many variables. We should not be afraid of them. The main idea is, so let me tell you this in advance. Why Nikrasov is so great? Because instead of solving this equation, so what people are doing, people are solving these equations and studying their solution. It is very complicated. You have a lot of quadrants. And you have solved, the, and you have uh, tried to solve them for different ends and k. 
It's very hard problem. Okay? So what, Nikra, what Nikrasov realized? That you do not need to solve them. You do not need to solve them. You need to integrate. You need to consider a covariant, a covariant volume of the space of solutions. But then she actually moved from the locus here to the super space, just like I explained. Computed the covariant volume, rolled down this formula. And that's it. And nobody did it before. So all this game, the Wittsker presentation, is not just one what is not just one more funny formula. It is just it is just game universal expression. Mm. So what why would one want to calculate the equivalent volume of the instanton modular space? I mean, why equivalent volume? Why not the normal one? Okay. We will we will do this in two dimensional theory. Original our idea was that you consider C square. Mm -hmm. And on C square you have instantons. And curvature of the instanton. Okay, I'll write it in more mathematical notation. Mm -hmm. F wedge F trace without integral. Is something like this. These are bumps. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so um, uh, among the moduli of instantons, there were translation modes. Ah, so it's a compactness issue. I see. Yes. So uh, Nikrasov at some moment. Realize that uh, <clears throat> the volume itself is infinite, like volume of C squared. So then she was clever enough to say, let us replace C squared, but by things that are known as omega background. So he breaks uh, invariance here, picked up a zero, mm -hmm. and considered C star square acting on C square. But so then you need to choose weights. So naively, you might say that when instantons are far away, the space is like the space of points on C, on C squared. Mm -hmm. In particular, if you have one instanton, you have something like this. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have a finite a result, you need to pick up non-zero epsilon, epsilon one and epsilon two. So those are equivalent parameters. Yes, so those would be, th those are equivalent parameters for the world ship, for the four dimensional space. These are not the only parameters of the instanton. Instanton had also things called orientation. So there was a possibility to rotate this orientation. And she considers things equivalent not only with respect to these epsilons, 
but also with respect to external group that rotates at orientation. And we will see exactly these phenomena in two-dimensional stuff. So, so, there, so it seems that it seems that there are like some choices involved, like like some some sister actions on like a choice of sister action, right? One second. So, so sorry, it's called omega background. Mm -hmm. So the main thing that that Nikrasov introduced mm -hmm. is the sister action on C square, and from this. Not only not only you start to have finite equivariant volumes, also you have uh, nice formulas for integrals. So, well, first of all, you need to choose a C star action C squared, right? There are many. Yeah. In all, yes. In order to choose C star action on C square, you need to understand C square not as a not as a R four, but exactly as C square. C times C. But still there are many, even on C time, times C, there are many actions of, of, of C. Yeah. yeah, yes, yes, on C. Well, when you say C complex plane, you know Mil that complex plane has a zero. Oh, you want the standard one with weight one. Yeah, yes, you see, when I say C star action on uh, mm -hmm. C star action uh, on uh, C, mm -hmm. okay, say you want action. Okay, you want okay. it's so just, to say just you by want. multiplication, not with any power. I see. Yes, 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 just by rotation. So you see, when I say C star, it's better to say not C star, it's better to say U1 squared. So mm -hmm. people mostly missed this because people treated this uh, as R4. If you consider it as an R4, it is hard to pick up. Uh, U1 squared, okay? Mm -hmm. So his idea was to do it like this because it is a natural symmetry of this, uh, of the space of solution to this problem. But then this is some sort of, okay, we've broken somehow uh, some symmetry on the, uh, of the space time by representing it as C squared with some equivalent data. But then we also, okay, may, maybe we can live with that, but then we need to also translate it to the, this equivalent data to the space of instantons because we, from the world sheet, because we actually are asking the question about equivalent volume, not of the, not of the space time, but of the, of the space of instantons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the problem, so the fact is that C star action here could be lifted here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now he get, now he got this nice formula. So yeah, and you know, he is famous because of this thing called epsilon background. Now, what, what now? What what I would like to propose is uh, to study similar uh, things in uh, similar things uh, in two dimensions of course mm. so you so usually uh, so in the town you consider as some unitary uh, connection a self dwarf unitary connection so then the complexification could correspond to some stable vector bundle. Okay, uh, let me comment on this. Yes. So when people say instantons, there are two ways to treat it. Instantons, either this factor factored by the complex. Yes. Group. So. Hmm. And here you here you put some stability data. Or, or you have uh, this equation. Plus moment map.
and more than that, is something like this. As far as I remember, I don't remember this side. I thought it was minus, but I'm not sure at the moment. So, so there is also a moment map. I don't, I, I don't remember the moment map here. So these, and this you factorize by G common. So solutions to this set of equations, namely to complex equation, together with Together with the moment map, I think it's together with the moment map, these are called instanton. So Nikita, so what Nikita did? He just considered the theory of symplectic factor. Not, he was not solving this. He was not solving this. He just basically considered the integral representation similar to the representation that we are doing and considered the factorization with respect to the quantum group. <laughs> so the difference, so what we studied we studied this first. So analog of this moment map was in our case, the naught squared plus, plus the n squared equals to r squared. It was an analog of this. So he considered non-abelian group. We consider abelian group. This line, moment map, with respect to quantum, produces formulas like this. Now, Nikita had to consider this complex equation, algebraic equation. I explained to you right now that the inclusion of this equation could be done using the superstate. And the result of this would be formulas like this with numerator. There is also one factor that is missing here because this last factor would be the generalization from the U1 that we had to compact group that is typically SUN, SU, that is typically SUK. It stands here. It will be another factor that I'll explain later. But basically this is the procedure. So what we are doing, so what we were doing right now, we were considering first zero dimensional story. So Nikita's story was four-dimensional. We were considering zero-dimensional story. Now, where we are going? We want to consider the space of maps from the toric variety to toric variety, actually from the plane to toric variety. And we will try to reproduce the same thing that Nikita had. Okay. So in this case, uh, how about uh, the st stability condition? Because in the algebraic equation, you have to delete. Stability. It's interesting. Stability conditions are sitting here. Yes. In the moment map. Right. So if you study two equations, that's not a problem. But if you study only one algebraic equations, 
you have of to course. impose. Oh, yeah. but, but he studied, of course, of course he studied the moment map equation. Hmm. Okay, but at the moment, you see, I, I'm just explaining the Nikita setting, okay? Hmm. And uh, I'm trying to say how formulas that we are getting at the moment are related to these formulas that will that will uh, appear later on so now now i think we need to make a break pasha am i right uh whatever you say so let me see yes we need to make yes. a five minute break okay mm -hmm. I'm trying to go slowly. I'm trying to answer all questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so here, so, so what I managed to explain, I hope I managed to explain the equation. Okay. So, and you said break, right? What? You, you said that we are having a break. I yes. Think, yes. I think sorry, people sorry, already yes, decoupled. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, Pasha, thank you.
Thank you. 
Okay, I'm back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these two equations, uh, so the ABHM equation and the moment map, so do they correspond to vanishing of the two components of the curvature, like F0, 2, and F11? Yes, yes, exactly. The, no, no, it's not, they are, ana they are analogous to. Mm -hmm. So, Pasha, I'm trying to answer your question. Mm -hmm. The, the proper answer to your question, and I will always try to answer questions, is that the modular space of instantons has two models. Mm -hmm. This is finite dimensional model. Yes. So we, I assume that we continue, yes? Mm -hmm. And it also has infinite dimensional model. Right. This is very much like Chen Simons. So infinite dimensional model mm -hmm. is F to zero equals to zero. And this is the analog of this algebraic stuff. Mm -hmm. It also has F one one. And here I put a wedge product with the Keller form. And this corresponds here. Remember, I told you that this is the moment map. So, Andre, your camera is, is, is sort of uh, out of focus. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, so sometimes it happens. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So this is the analog of the moment map. Okay. And here we also have gauge symmetry. Yes, but in this case, the gauge group is a unitary group. Yes. Yes, you have to group. Here, here we have the gauge symmetry. The symmetry that we have that we have here is not the gauge symmetry. So it is the IDHM group. Mm -hmm. So when we do things like this, we get a anti self dual connection modulate space. When we do things like this, we all we have uh, the colomorphic bundle with unitary connection. Uh, what is actually G compact on the right side? Is it is it uh, gauge transformations uh, over a point? No. No. Okay. Not even close. Mm -hmm. That's why I say that, uh, uh, that, you see, what actually stands here is mm -hmm. the group like <laughs> SUK, uh -huh. where K is the infinite number. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It is not the gauge transformation on a point. You might try to consider this group, actually. I'm sorry, Pasha, I need to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and the truth in this finite dimensional model is that this thing is better is best explained as the couple system of d three brain and d minus one brain. I'm sorry to say the truth is too harsh for me. Yes, but sir, Pasha, okay, mm -hmm. I, I'm telling you the truth, and we will. We will come to this point. So, if you have n components here and k components here, 
you have strings that go this way, strings that go this way, and strings that go this way. So actually, you have two groups. You have like SUN here, you have SUK here. So the appearance of SUK is seen from the string theory point of view. While in this construction, you may say it just happens in the construction. No, th this is very interesting what you said because you more or less have drawn the ADHM construction in this picture. Yes, uh, so what people realized in 90s is that ADHM construction mm -hmm. is exactly the construction of, I'm sorry to say, strings connecting brain. So you can say, let us forget about strings, let us just consider this quiver system. Mm -hmm. You may say quivers. However, people, people realize at some moment that these quivers uh, are embedded, I'm sorry to say, Pasha, in M theory in this picture. Now, this is very interesting. So maybe, so, uh, so you may forget about M theory. Then you may consider this just as a formal construction. Or you may keep this in mind. So it depends on your taste. I cannot uh, not even teach you the taste. I cannot even affect your taste. I just want to say that uh, tea is this and coffee is this. And you might prefer to use tea or coffee. I think that there's, there's, there's an, an, an acquired taste, right? I think string theory can be an acquired taste. Okay, so here, here, you have, uh, you have this picture. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the gay, and, and here, the compact group is the gay group, mm -hmm. like you have. Because this model is very different from this model. But what is uh, marvelous, is that the moduli space is the same, or almost the same. So there's no kind of on the nose reduction from one picture to the other? No. Mm -hmm. the, the only way how you can uh, relate this picture, I mm -hmm. would say, is uh, by embedding both of them inside M0. So it is re really, really not like churn silence, I see. So you see, if you prefer homological, uh, okay, French understanding, these two things are two different resolvents of the same space. No, but that, that is good, but that, that would sort of indicate that there is a reduction directly from one to the other, or maybe not, maybe there's a zigzag, yeah, I don't know. So, so the way, so, so the way to have a, you know how we do when we have two resolvers. Mm -hmm. We have double complex, right? Mm -hmm. It means that you need to have a picture where both things happen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So suppose you have, uh, say, resolvent of uh, a shift in terms of uh, several bundles. Mm -hmm. It's a nice and finely dimensional story. Yes. You may also have a Dalbo resolution. Mm -hmm. Now, what would it mean to put everything together? Mm -hmm. It would mean to have a lot of fields. Mm -hmm. That would be both smooth and also with many components. Mm -hmm. So many components with represent algebraic side of the game, Smoothness would represent the Dalbo side of the game. And in this big double complex, you are doing something. <laughs> called a tic-tac-toe, as you know. Tic-tac-toe story. Uh, Saying the two different results. So, so this story is similar. Mm -hmm. So you may ask, 
Паша, Паша, you may ask, what is the double complex here? Yes. Okay? Yes. That contains both. Yeah. And the answer is that you may not like. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that the only double complex that people invented here is this. Mm -hmm. Where we have gauge theory on what is called this three brain. You may uh, contract something uh, auxiliary, but uh, you only need to have this. You also should have zero dimensional gauge theory, like, like matrix model that stands here. And you need to have a couple. Then you may contract it in one way to get uh, ADHM, where you do not have uh, any smooth functions. You may contract them in another way to get to get to get gauge symmetry. Mm -hmm. So what is the other way? <laughs> So, 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 so another way, another way is to integrate out this matrix model and to see that result of integration of its degree of freedom would mean that you have a gauge theory with a, a non-trivial bundle. Topological non-trivial yes, bundle. Yes, case then to the game, right. Mm -hmm. So thing that unifies this is some kind of reduction of this system. So at least you need to have uh, several copies of, sorry to say, I'm, I'm afraid to say now this we, this we bring, but some gauge theory here, matrix model here, and the coupling. So let us forget everything that is not needed, but you need something but you need something smooth here and something matrix here. By the way, Pasha, we play this game. So it is actually similar. It, it is similar to Charles Simons. Mm -hmm. Pasha, you should not be afraid. It is similar to Charles Simons. When you have degrees of freedom on the Wilson loop mm -hmm. and yes. degrees of freedom in the bound. Yes. And, what, and there are two ways to compute something. Mm -hmm. One way is to integrate out degrees of freedom on the Wilson loop. And you will get interesting observable in the bulk. Yes. And you will study it as a theory in the bulk. Sure. Or you can do it all the way around. You may try to integrate out uh, theory in the bulk and get effective theory of the line. And you know that there are two ways to compute the dot invariant. Mm -hmm. One way and another way. Yeah. Okay, but, 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 but this is too philosophical, okay? Yeah. And I want to and I want to explain the following thing. Yeah, I, I just have to say that that when you draw this picture, something that looks like black magic to me is when you draw like n whatever brains and you immediately say that this corresponds to S U N gauge theory. So this is something that I don't understand. But I, I guess you will explain it at some point or oh okay, okay, okay. So so let us do it. So let us arrange it. Let us arrange this. You see, I'm, I'm trying to keep with the interest of the audience. At least you got interested in this construction. No, no but so maybe, you, maybe you are going to return to it at some point. You said that you're going yeah, to explain. Right? Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So I, I, I didn't mean I, to, I shouldn't distract you from I, your exposition. So. I, I realized from this discussion, I realized that uh, I should explain this construction too, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But at the moment, I just want to say 
that all these computations in the instantonic theory missed the analog of WDV here. Mm -hmm. It is missing. So this theory is great. However, uh, this theory is, is incomplete. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we are going to do? We are going to study the two-dimensional analog of this, mm -hmm. of this story. And uh, the advantage of two-dimensional analog is that it is that it has both. It has equivalent calculus. And also, it has uh, WDV. So we will try to understand it there how WDV and equivalent story are related. Okay. In order to bring equivalent, in order to bring WDV point of view to this story, that is uh, completely unknown. So. By the way, when you say WDV, WDV is, is just Siegel's axiom, Siegel's gluing axiom, where you contract uh, your boundary circles to, to punctures. It's nothing else. Double, the WDV is, is not exactly this. Well, uh, so, uh, so, so let me propose the following. I'll explain a equivalent point of view on mm -hmm. uh, two dimensional signal models. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and we will see gradually how WDV appe appears there, mm -hmm. and then we will try to lift it to higher dimension. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so let me come to the. to the main object of study in dimension two, okay? I think WDV is about glue, gluing, of, I don't know, two pairs of pens where you, you're collapsing to uh, the circles in, into punctures, or... So, yeah. okay, my point of view, Pasha, my mm -hmm. point of view is WDV is about the generation of uh, toric uh, variety. So my point of view on WDV is about M04 and the kill relation. Yeah, I know you, you explained it to us, but that's the, that's exactly the same yeah. as as the Siegel's axiom. Not uh, not really, because for me WDV is this one. You have a toric manifold, and then toric manifold could degenerate. But why do you say toric manifold? You are not drawing the source pictures, not, not the target picture. Yes, yeah, so source picture, yes. So yes. It, it's a source picture. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. However, when you have a toric source, you can use a covariant calculus. Okay. So uh, the thing that I'd like to come to Mm -hmm. is the relation of a covariant calculus mm -hmm. with this source decomposition. Mm -hmm. and, and my conjecture that would it be done would not be, would be like 30% of field conjecture, okay? Is that this story, this two-dimensional story in four dimensions, would be similar. We just need to consider the generation of toric sources. Right. And but we this, need to look for. Mm -hmm. But this relation, I mean, the equation is between the genera generations where you have your factorizing form, right? So, and two degenerations, you're saying that they, that it forms a, a, a boundary in the, in the moduli space. But that is the Siegel's cool. axiom. Um, I don't know. You, you, you may say so. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing is 
that touring the generations mm -hmm. are more uh, interesting mm -hmm. than just this. It's, it's probably just another language for it, where you don't speak about boundaries, but instead talk about punctures, which is all right in the... It's just a language ad adapted to the punctures and uh, sort of topological case. So in China, so, okay, so I, I, have, a, I have a belief, mm -hmm. and my belief is that, uh, that uh, there should be a higher dimensional analog of this... Uh, of this thing that is a toric degeneration. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that toric degeneration actually comes from the subdivision of the polytope. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the one has to consider different, uh, one has to sum over all subdivisions. So there is only one subdivision of the interval. It is like this. However, subdivisions of the polytope are much more interesting. Subdivisions of the polytope mm -hmm. correspond to so-called algebra of the infrared of Witten Moore Gayota. Gayota Moore Witten. That uh, that was studied by my student Suhana. Mm -hmm. So there, so there is interesting algebraic structure associated to to the to the generation to the generation of toric uh, surfaces, mm -hmm. and it's actually w w w where I am going. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But before I'll be there, I'd like to see what the, what happens from the equivariant side. Mm -hmm. So, so unfortunately, I have just time to settle the question, and I already gave you all answers. But there is a space of math. from CP1 to, say, CPF. And these maps, holomorphic maps, and this space I'll call them quasi-maps. Actually, there, there is, so this space is, of course, given explicitly. Let me write down it explicitly. Z capital, no, oh, okay, I'll call it Y, in order not to make things. Y zero is a polynomial of degree D of Z0, Z1, etc. Y n is a polynomial n of degree D of Z0, Z1. This space of polynomials is given completely by their coefficient. So say this coefficient is a zero z naught to the power d, I'll call it d, plus a zero d minus one, z naught to the power d minus one, z one, plus etc. So these polynomials are described by 
the matrix A, I, K. Maybe I, I, maybe I would like to call it alpha. So I runs from zero to what? To L and alpha runs from zero to D. So these A's look pretty much like coordinates in the space CN plus one, D plus one. But you should take a caution by, by C star. Of course. Mm -hmm. And I need to take a caution by C star. So this is the space of quasi mm -hmm. Now, there are two interesting groups that are acting here. So this C star, let me call this C star, C star gate. X as follows. It has also, so there are also two other actions. First action is the action of C star to the power N. So I'll call this, so I'll call this with the covariant parameter of sigma, sigma i. It takes a l alpha into lambda i alpha. And here i goes from one Oh, sorry, A. And here I goes from one to N. So this one, so we already considered this sequence. But now there is another group, another U1. And this other U1 X here. And you are that X here has parameter epsilon. So you might say that it acts as follows. Z0 is not changed, Z1 is going to mu Z1. So here we have parameter epsilon. Is there a particular reason why there you are talking about U1 rather than C star? Uh, no, no, you see, it's because the Nicovarian cohomology. You may say C star, but you are not factorizing. Here, here I'd like to consider it equivalently with respect to this U1. I consider it equivalently with respect to compact group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this compact group comes as a compact part of the algebraic C star. Okay. So this is the space of quasi -mesh. And what we, and now, the, and now the setup. So these quasi maps correspond to instantons in dimension two. So what we would like to do, we would like to consider, so here I, I only can pose the problem and I'll, I'll solve it the next time, okay? Now we can study the following problems because all technique is already explained. Problem one.
make a variant cohomology of of this state. Problem two. Change the topology of CP1 and study equivalent cohomology of maps. Of which kind of maps? Of C. To CPM. What, what, what do I mean? What do I mean here? Here, I mean maps that go as follow. In the second problem, I mean the following maps, that when z1 over z0 goes to infinity, the map goes to a constant. So in homogeneous coordinates, so I may write this maps in homogeneous coordinates. And this problem too is the most close. It is the closest analog of Nikasin. Computation. Because in the class of computation, he studied the instance on the C square as the condition was that F wedge F went to zero as moduli Z went to infinity. Okay? So analog of this condition would be condition that we are studying the maps that go to, to that go to a constant. So what does this actually mean in formulas? Okay. Consider why. Consider the case example. CP1 mm. and capital equals to one. We have Y1 equals of here we need to write linear polynomial A11 Z1 plus A10 Z0. Y0 equals A01 Z1 plus A00 Z0, right? So the ratio Y equals A11 Z plus A10 A01 Z plus A00. So this is one instanton. So, so this is one instantonic solution in the problem one. Now, what happens when Z is going to infinity? When Z is going to infinity, 
Everything depends on how A behaves. For fixed A, when Z is going to infinity, Y goes to where? To the A11 over A01. Okay? So it may look, so it may look that uh, there is no difference between problem one and problem two. However, it is wrong. Pasha, do you see why it is wrong? Because, it, because it's a question of topology. It's a question of topology. Because there is a line, okay. So do, so, so do you see, do you think that problem one and problem two are the same? Naively, you think that they are the same. There could be a, yes. bad, there could be a bad denominator. Like a a one zero equal to zero, or not bad denominator. Or... Right. The issue is that there. Okay. okay. So so when we have this thing, okay, we have a well-defined thing as a pre-images of uh, zero and infinity. Mm -hmm. So, so there is a ratio that is pre image of zero. So I can equally rewrite it in the following way some constant z plus b one z plus b zero. In this parameterization, in this parameterization, The instant of is a pair of two points, B1 and B0 on the sword. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. It is clear how you want rotation. Work. It clearly rotates this position of this point B1 and B0. And here we may think about two cases. Case where the topology is C and case where topology is CP1. In the case where topology is C, the only invariant instant of that would be a fixed point is when B0 and B1 together go to zero. So everything is localized at zero. However, so, so I, I need to write down a picture, case C zero. It is the only fixed point. We may say that instant on is concentrated at zero. Oh, where is my formula? Okay. 
However, in the case of CP1, you have actually not only one point, you have actually two points. Zero and infinity. So this is one case. And infinity is as good as zero. So here we have a crucial difference between C and CP1. Mm -hmm. And there will be formulas that include only this fixed point and another poor formulas that include also this fixed point. So, I mean, when they go both go to the same point, that's a freckle, as you taught us. Yes. So what? Uh, when we computed volume of the instantonic space. When you computed volume of the C space, everything concentrated at zero, while zero was definitely cut out mm -hmm. of so-called space of physical solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember the trick. The trick of equivalent volume mm -hmm. was that you compute integral over CPM by localization at zero, that is taken out originally from the CPM. That means uh, unstable. Hmm. So let me recall how things were going on. CPM theory. We said that it is C, that, that, that is this. We even put a moment map, okay? Moment map and factorize over U1. However, this integral, however, we managed to take this integral transform this integral into the contribution of zero here. And this is the most remarkable thing here in this business, that this integral transformation made the integral that we studied over, over this space that did not contain zero, as we thought. It is deformed to the contribution of the zero. Uh, uh, that's why it's so surprising. We wanted to compute something excluded the, where zero was excluded. We made some manipulations with integrals and we see that everything is localized to zero. Um, I'm confused uh, by, the, so the, the, there was uh, also the example of equivalent volume of C star being zero because somehow the um, fixed yes. points are outside. That was the argument. Yes, but, 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 uh, but here, yes. But here we studied the but here we studied the covariant volume of CPM, mm -hmm. and uh, we know that it gave, that it gave the right result. However, the way how we got this result, okay, the the integral representation, the, the way how we how we derive this result through the integral representation. Mm -hmm. shows that uh, we lifted everything to the space that was c to the n plus one 
then we used equivariant localization, and it gave us localization, surprisingly, to the region near zero. Because we overrun the, the moment map by equivariant deformation. Mm -hmm. Still, you see, I made all these computations, uh, so we made them together. Mm -hmm. So you might see that the answer is, is correct. So still, yes, you, you might say that this, that this, go, that this goes to freckles. Mm -hmm. OK, so still I want to say that there are two cases. There is one case, and there is another case, and they are different. And the problem is to compute, to start with the computation of the equivalent volume in the problem one. And in the problem too. You see, if there is a space, if there is a space, uh, there should be a result. Mm -hmm. So after after we we will describe these two problems, OK? We may do the following. We may and should include the action of the external u1 to the power n acting here. OK? Mm -hmm. And uh, put in equivariant factors corresponding to this action. And now, there is a problem number three. Problem number three is the following. Let us try to let us try to reproduce the evaluation observables. So we have CP1 times CP1 times this space, quasi maps. And there is evaluation here. We may try to compute we may try to to take observable on the CPN and lift it here. So here I need to put evaluation in quotient, OK? However, here there are classes, and here there are classes. It's clear how to take one classes from the right to the left. And we may compute this. It will be an interesting uh, result. Also, problem number four. It is run Donaldson observables in would be gram of meter. So, 
So what does this mean? <coughs> this mean <coughs> this mean that we would like to consider classes here. Over CP one times quasi maps and take a push forward along CP one and intersect them on the space of quasi maps. So there are these four problems. So problem number one and problem number two are pretty valid problems because it is just uh, the version of the theory of giving talent across. Problem number three and problem number four were considered as a wrong problem. And, and we need to see why problems number three and problems number four do not reproduce. Actually, why do you want to push forward along CP1? Uh, we would probably want to push forward along QM because we want to integrate out, integrate over the space of quasi maps. I, I, yes. So uh, you see, in this setting, in this setting, it is possible to do the thing that Witten wrote in his first paper mm -hmm. on sigma model. But it's a, it's a we can try to do it not in Kansevich mining way, mm -hmm. but in the way that was originally proposed by Witten. Mm -hmm. What what was sort of the idea behind it? So one averages over the point of insertion of the observable. That's a strange. So it, so so idea. So this idea was uh, the idea of Donaldson. Mm -hmm. Donaldson got Donaldson. Mm -hmm. There's the following. He had that the world sheet X4 times modular space of instantons, and he had universal bundle. Mm -hmm. So he considered universal chart classes C, CI on X4 times mod. And he puts them down along X4. Mm -hmm. Along X4, not along mod. Mm -hmm. So this was the definition of Donaldson observable. I see. So now we know, after Kansevich and Malin, mm -hmm. that we need to push forward along mod on configuration space on X4. Yes, but uh, but people are not doing this in four dimensions. They are doing it this way. Mm -hmm. So we may look. So why I'm putting this problem three and four? We may we may look at the two dimensional analog of the Donaldson's game. And they are doing this uh, in four dimensions because they are thinking in terms of characteristic classes and Chernvale formula, which involves integration over X4. So, the, so they were doing it in four dimensions because of two reasons. First reason is that they are that this thing is celebrated because of Donaldson observables, and they were used to study smooth structures on the four manifolds. Okay. And that was the original Donaldson idea, after all. And Donaldson got a field prize for this. Uh, uh, this is arguing by authority, not by mathematics. Uh, uh, yes, yes. 
So when Donaldson was doing this, mm -hmm. okay, so he, he was do, going this way. No, but I think the reason here is probably from the theory of characteristic classes where you, you would like to, yeah, you have some sort of a density of your characteristic number and you need to integrate it over X4 to get the characteristic number. So that's probably the reason. But he, but he wants to, to get a form of the moduli space and mm -hmm. he compactified it somehow. Mm -hmm. and, and the way how he compactified it resembles pretty much the quasi maps. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is that quasi map theory you may call, is the proper analog of what Donaldson was doing mm -hmm. in the mind before. I see, I see. So in order to have more understanding on more complicated four dimensional story, we may do it in dimension two. Mm -hmm. Now we have additional insight. And the additional insight is that in the very specific case, we can do it equivariantly in many ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so it is good to consider the very special case. It is good to consider uh, toric sources. Of course, Donaldson never considered toric sources. Come on. But we may and should consider toric sources and, and see and see in dimension two the difference between the Donaldson approach and the uh, Kansevich Marin approach. So what, what I so actually Donaldson approach was original Witten's approach. So it is clear that on the space CP1 times quasi maps, so these are projective manifolds. Of course, there are classes. We can play the game of classes. So sorry. <clears throat> so the uh, quasi maps <clears throat> is uh, several maps from CP1 to a target. So 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 I, I would I would like to say that there are two things. First, first thing is the following. Let us try to play with original proposal of Edward Witten from his paper of 1990. Edward Witten. So Edward Witten proposed to work in two dimensions, like Donaldson worked in four dimensions. You may open the you may open the paper and you will see it there. That Edward Wheaton and he's uh, motivated by Donaldson uh, eighty six or eighty five proposed to integrate along the, uh, along the CP1. And consider in this way zero observables and two observables. Unfortunately, he did not compute the result. Because would he compute the result, he would not get WDVV. But he would get something. So in our case, in our case, we have the space of quasi maps. Okay, we have a universal map. Maybe we do not have evaluation. Okay, let us forget about evaluation. Okay, but definitely we have line bundles here that look pretty much like evaluation map. 
So no, okay. no relation because of uh, freckles? Yes, no relation because of freckles. Mm -hmm. But here we have the analog of Donaldson. Mm -hmm. We have a line bundle here. And we can play, and I propose to play the Donaldson game. Sorry, I missed your previous uh, talk. What is the space of quasi maps? So the, 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 the space that I described right now is, of course, the space of quasi maps. It is quasi maps because if polynomials that I had have a common zero, when you divide polynomials, you would not get a map. Oh, okay. So quasi-map is basically when B0 equals B1. So it's, it's maps to C, C n mod C star, not C n minus, minus the origin mod C star. So, so if you consider this thing, when B0 equals B1, it is a constant map. But when Z equals B0 and B1, it, it, it is anything. Wow. So you you remove this unstable point. Yes. So, so yes. So so these unstable points are quasi maps. Okay. Only consider stable maps. Yes. So, but uh, but the space of quasi maps itself is nice. It is fine. It's possible to consider something on the space of quasi-maps. So there is, there are two things. There is a differential form that could be lifted here, but there are also line bundle and there are observables here. So I strongly propose to play the following game. To consider here something, it's proposal. You see, it's a proposal that I'm going to discuss. To construct here all over this space, to construct a line bundle and consider chain class of this line bundle and consider its case power. And compare this with, with the pullback of evaluation map. These two things would be different. However, here it would be possible to play with them with the dons and observables. Okay, I, I'll explain it in more detail. So actually, I explained problems one, two clearly, and I explained problem three and four uh, not precise. So let us do the following thing. Let us first solve problems one and two, and then we will discuss problems three and four. Because problems three and four are well defined if you consider not nonlinear sigma model. Pasha, I'm sorry. Pasha? Yes. I'm sorry, I have to mention this. The problems three and four comes when you discover when you study linear sigma model. Uh, well, why do you apologize? I apologize. Потому что, Паша, я хотел это не упоминать вообще, но okay. по политическим причинам. Right. <laughs> Потому что я хотел это привлечь для, для того семинара. Но я не могу совсем это не говорить. Я просто... I think we should stick with English. I think we should stick with English. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. So, Sam, yeah. so there was some personal reason why I... Uh, 
why I'm so nervous talking about three and four. Okay, so it is because uh, I have a conjecture that problems three and four would be a well-defined, well-posed problem in uh, gauge linear model. And it's interesting to compare them. So problem one and two would give connection to Nikrasov and given time. Problems three and four would be about uh, relation between gauge linear sigma model and nonlinear sigma model. Mm -hmm. And now we have all tools to study everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let us start with problems one and two, and then three and four. And I anticipate that uh, three and four, understanding of three and four would lead to special coordinates on the so-called second mirror of common wafer. It's a condensation of uh, internals. So in any case, in any case, I I put a stage mm -hmm. to study problem one and two. Okay. Mm -hmm. By the way, one may ask, in this nonlinear model, CP1 to CPM, where where can we put a zero observable? You can evaluate only at zero or at infinity. You may evaluate only at fixed point. If you evaluate not at the fixed point, it's not invariant with respect to U1. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next time, and next time would be next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. After you may think about this, I will give you an answer. I will give you answers. Okay. And we will see what is going on. Moreover, it would fit with the seminars with Dong. Okay. Because it will be exactly the time when our discussions with Dong would come exactly to this to this moment. Mm -hmm. Dong. So so we decided to discuss the so we will so tomorrow we will discuss uh, moduli spaces. And uh, and uh, integrable systems, right? Oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, first, uh, I thought it was replaced by uh, the paper you suggest. Just last week. Oh, 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 I, I, but you see, when, when I suggest a paper, I don't mean that uh, that we will that you will have to study this. Okay, okay. Uh, and so okay. this paper was an advertisement of what we can discuss. Yes, yes, good. Uh, because we uh, cannot ask question to the paper. Okay. So, but unfortunately, uh, it turns out I'm not available tomorrow. So, actually, I send a ma mail to Nikolai Nev to cancel. So, 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 if you are not available tomorrow, yes. we may skip this okay. or we may shift it to some other day. So what would you propose? Uh, you, we don't have to shift. I think uh, we stick on a regular basis. Just it's canceled no, tomorrow. No, no, no. So you see, if you are not available, and we call it discussions with you, it means that uh, by definition, you see, there will be no seminar so, tomorrow. So only for tomorrow. I, I need to go. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Bye. It's normal. Bye. Bye. Bye.